Hello and welcome to the State of the Fleet Industry, a weekly video series produced by Automotive Fleet Magazine. I'm Mike Antich, editor of Automotive Fleet, and today I'd like to examine what's occurring in the fleet industry for the week of June 27, 2022. And for this week's episode, I'd like to continue my reporting on what is happening in the 2023 model year ordering cycle. So if you remember last week's video report, I recorded it the day prior to the opening of the 2023 Ram ProMaster order bank, which officially opened on Monday, June 20th. And during that report, I made a prediction that there would be an extremely strong order activity the next day for the 2023 ProMaster, especially since so Stellantis was allowing units to be ordered on a free flow basis. But now, looking back a week later, my forecast was really an understatement. Not only was order activity extremely strong for the 2023 ProMaster, its fleet allocation was sold out within the week prompting Stellantis last Friday to announce an order cutoff deadline of 2 p.m. Central Time on Monday, June 27th, namely yesterday. And although vehicle orders for the Pro Master might have been successfully placed prior to the deadline, Stellantis cautioned fleets that it cannot guarantee production nor offer price protection. And as an aside, price protection promises to become an even bigger concern for fleet buyers that extends to all OEMs and all brands, it's an industry-wide concern. Typically, when fleet orders are canceled in one model year, it is rolled over into the next model year ordering cycle. If prices increase in the next model year, some fleet managers complain that it's unfair for these units not to be price protected at the prior model year prices. I mean, after all, these were the prices in effect at the time that the order was accepted by the OEM. But as they say, there are two sides to every story, and uh, let me leave this issue as a topic for a future discussion. But with that said, let's return to our discussion about the current status of the 2023 ordering cycle. And when you step back and look at the market as a whole, what's apparent is that fleet demand is not only strong for specific models, but it's strong for the industry as a whole. Fleet order volume for almost all 2023 models continues to be extremely robust. In fact, just last Thursday, June 23rd, GM announced an immediate cutoff for the U.S. fleet ordering for the 2023 Chevrolet Bolt, Bolt EUV, and Cadillac CT4. In fact, any order placed on Thursday, June 23rd, the cutoff date, were canceled. So as of this week, according to my count, there are now 31 models that have sold out their entire 2023 fleet allocation. And as I mentioned many times in the past, what's causing this uh, strong demand is pent-up demand created by the cancellation of prior year orders. So in addition to the pent-up demand, another factor and an obvious factor that's limiting both retail and fleet allocations is decreased production volumes of new vehicles due to supply constraints for a variety of components, but in particular, the shortage of automotive semiconductors. These capacity constraints are causing the published ordering deadline dates for some models to be delayed. And here's a for instance, in a recent uh, example, the Chevrolet low cab forward gasoline truck, which should have been available for ordering on June 30th is now delayed due to continued product production uncertainty. So when will the Chevrolet low cab forward gasoline model be available for ordering? You know, the answer is a TBD. You know, there is no new order date. The new order date will be announced at an unspecified later time. And this leads to the question in the minds of all fleet managers, and myself included, is how much longer will these supply constraints continue? And this question was addressed earlier this month on Wednesday, June 15th by Alex Partners, and it's a major global consulting company. And it made this, it had this discussion at its Global Automotive Outlook Conference. And there, Alex Partners predicted that the supply constraints and microchip shortages will persist through calendar year 2024, which who would have thought takes us into the 2025 model year? According to Alex Partners, the important distinction when forecasting supply chain constraints is differentiating between saying it's getting better versus saying it's over. So yes, supply chain situ- the supply chain situation is better today than in past months, but according to Alex Partners, we're still a long way away from saying it's over. So in all likelihood, we'll continue to have similar types of discussions like we're having today, 12 months from now. So let's switch gears and we'll talk about the current 
dynamics of today's fuel prices, which have come down a bit from the uh, for the first time in months. And but the national average for fuel prices still remains at record highs when compared to pre-pandemic fuel prices. You know, the per gallon price of gasoline is thir still 37 cents higher than it was a month ago and nearly $2 more per gallon than a year ago. But last Wednesday, June 22nd, President Biden called on the U.S. Congress to temporarily suspend for 90 days the 18 cents federal tax per gallon on gasoline and the 24 cents federal tax per gallon of diesel. However, at the moment, this is just a proposal and nothing is going to happen until the U.S. Congress votes to approve the proposed 90-day tax suspension. And while this tax suspension may provide some temporary relief, credit, critics of this plan say that it could actually have the opposite effect in that lower fuel prices could increase consumer demand, which in turn would drive up prices instead of actually lowering them. So for my closing observation for this week's report, I'd like to discuss the new construction market, which has been impacted by the recent spike in mortgage interest rates, which have gone up to 6%. And this was a direct reaction to the announcement on June 15th that the Federal Reserve increased its target rate for federal funds by 75 basis points. So you ask yourself, why is this important? Well, first, the new construction market is a major fleet buyer of pickup trucks and vans. And during the 2008 credit crisis, the first indicator of the impending recession was the decrease in pickup truck sales, which prior to this were very robust. Historically, the new construction market is typically the leading indicator of an impending slowdown in the national economy. In fact, the softening of pickup truck sales was really the proverbial canary in the coal mine as it was the first indicator of the impending 2008 recession. And I remember this time well, and I remember talking with fleet dealers who were complaining about the slowdown in pickup truck sales to their vocational fleet customers, which was well before, you know, the housing crisis became national news. You know, and what was unknown to us at the time, you know, this was 2007, was that this slowdown in pickup trail sales was telegraphing to us the impending economic slowdown. And none of us realized that at the time, it's only in hindsight that we've seen this. But with all the talk of recession in today's market, keep your eye on pickup truck sales. So with this as my final observation, I'd like to conclude my State of the Fleet Industry presentation for the week of June 27, 2022. And I'd like to thank you for watching.